This movie tells us the story of a young Inca emperor named Cuzco, who was transformed into a scrawny llama that we see getting wet in the middle of the jungle. However, before turning into a lice-ridden and lonely animal, Cuzco had a great life because from a young age, he was given everything he wanted, indulging all his whims. In this way, the young prince grew up to become an arrogant and egocentric emperor who does whatever he pleases without caring about others, so much so that he ruthlessly punishes anyone who disrupts his style, like this poor old man whom he throws out of the window just because he wrinkled his suit. Cuzco has an elderly advisor called Isma, who is just as despicable as him. The wrinkled old woman has no qualms about kicking an innocent peasant out of her house when he came to ask for food for his family. But that's not all, because the evil old lady conspires with her bumbling henchman named Kronk to seize the throne. However, before she can do that, Cusco feels that the old lady's appearance is unpleasant, so luckily for her, he fires her. Hey, everybody has to retire, you should have done it 50 years ago. After that, the young emperor summons a kind-hearted peasant named Pacha to the palace and informs him that his village will be destroyed because he plans to build a luxurious summer house there for his vacations. Although Pacha disagrees because this would destroy the homes in his village, the unfortunate Cusco tells him, your cute little village is going to be. Ta-ta. As for Isma and Kronk, they plan to take over the kingdom. So, they go to their secret laboratory and create a potion with which they intend to poison Cusco. However, their plans go haywire because the dunces mix up the vials and give the silly emperor a potion that quickly turns him into a llama. Isma orders Hercules to get rid of Cusco, so they can take him out of the palace and send him to Mama Coco's. Therefore, Kronk hits the llama king with a tray and puts him in a sack, which he throws over a waterfall. But later, Kronk has a change of heart and saves Cusco before he falls off the cliff because he's actually a decent guy, just misguided by the wretched Isma. With Cusco still alive, Kronk tries to hide his body somewhere, but the klutz stumbles upon a kitten, and the sack ends up on Patch's cart. When the peasant arrives home, we see his family waiting for him, and his wife asks about the audience with the emperor. Knowing that she's pregnant, Pacha hides the truth to avoid upsetting her. He unloads his cart and discovers Cusco transformed into a llama. Cusco, in llama form, speaks gibberish, but Pacha deduces that he's the emperor. He tries to make Cusco understand that he's become a furry beast. Upon realizing this, the foolish king freaks out and tries to remember what happened to him. Failing to do so, he instructs the peasant to take him back to the palace so that Isma can return him to normal with one of her potions. Taking advantage of the situation, Pacha proposes that he'll accompany Cusco in exchange for relocating the mansion elsewhere. However, the clueless Cusco decides to go back to the palace alone. The noble peasant warns him about the dangers of the jungle, but the emperor ignores him and continues on his path. Pacha, being a kind-hearted soul, follows him to protect him. Naturally, Cusco gets lost in the jungle and ends up in the midst of jaguars that start chasing him. The Llama King runs away, but luck isn't on his side as he's cornered by the felines. Just when he's about to be devoured, Pacha swings in like Tarzan and rescues him with a vine. However, they get stuck on a log and end up in a river, going over a waterfall. Once they are safe, they argue again. Cusco lies down to sleep and, not being used to the outdoors, starts feeling very cold. So, Pacha uses his poncho to keep him warm. Seeing this act of kindness, Cusco is confused and probably begins to rethink his selfish ways. Due to him never having seen a selfless gesture in his life, in the palace, Isma believes that Cusco is dead and organizes a funeral in his honor to seize the empire afterward. But while speaking with Kronk, she discovers that the emperor is still alive and sets out to search for him throughout the kingdom to finish him off for good. Back with Cusco, he thanks Pacha for his gesture and promises not to build the mansion in his village, which the innocent villager accepts. He agrees to guide him to the palace, unaware that it's all a deceitful scheme by the cunning monarch. When they are crossing a bridge, Pacha gets tangled in some leaves, and the foolish king takes advantage of the situation to leave him hanging while confessing that he only deceived him to show him the way. However, Cusco's plan backfires because the bridge also breaks, leaving him hanging from the vines. They start fighting, and the bridge ends up collapsing, causing them to fall into a pool of crocodiles. Fortunately, both of them get stuck between some hills, which they use as a team to climb up the mountains. Thanks to this, Pacha manages to grab onto a rope and they are propelled by a swarm of bats to the top of the hill. At that moment, a piece of the ground breaks, and just as Pacha is about to fall into the void, Cusco saves him. 
Here, the peasant realizes that the young king is actually of good heart, and as a sign of gratitude, he decides to accompany him to the palace. The only problem is that they now have to take a detour since they ended up on the other side of the bridge. After walking for a while, they pass by a restaurant and feel very hungry, so they decide to stop and eat. However, since llamas are not allowed inside the restaurant, the furry emperor disguises himself as a woman to pass as Patch's wife. When they are served their food, Cusco realizes that it's a revolting cooked beast, so he goes to complain to the chef to prepare something else. At that moment, Isma and Kronk arrive at the restaurant and sit at the table next to them. Pacha overhears their conversation and learns about their plans to get rid of Cusco. Quickly, he heads to the kitchen to find Cusco. Kronk notices Pacha leaving and follows him to ask who he is. Therefore, the clever peasant tricks the restaurant staff into singing happy birthday to Isma, making her believe it's her birthday. He uses this distraction to get Cusco out of the restaurant and explains to him that Isma and her henchmen are after him to send him to the Llama Heaven. However, the monarch initially thinks it's just Patch's exaggeration and goes to meet with the old advisor. But just as he is about to meet her, he learns the truth as he overhears the wrinkled old woman scolding Kronk for leaving him alive. Disillusioned, Cusco decides to return to Pacha, but it's too late because the good-hearted villager had already left. Just then, it starts to rain, and we go back to the beginning of the movie, where we see Cusco alone in the rain. Later, Cusco wanders through the jungle and comes across a herd of llamas, among which he finds Pacha. The llama king apologizes, and they become friends. Then, the peasant promises to take him to the palace, but first, they head to Pacha's village to get provisions. Meanwhile, Kronk goes to sleep peacefully with his teddy bear when suddenly he remembers that Pacha was the one who took Cusco. He tells Isma, and they head to Patch's village to interrogate him. While Kronk waits to pass the time, he starts jumping rope with Patch's kids. When the peasant and Cusco arrive at the village, they learn from a neighbor that Isma is at their house. So, Patcha sneaks into the hut and tells his wife what happened to distract the villains. Meanwhile, he and Cusco make it to the castle. Sneakily, Patch's wife locks Isma and Kronk in a closet. However, they manage to free themselves and chase Cusco all over the kingdom. Meanwhile, Pacha and the llama make it to the old lady's secret lab, where they find a bunch of potions, except for the one that can turn Cusco back into a human. At that moment, Isma also shows up and reveals that she has the last antidote. Then, the old lady orders Kronk to finish them off, but as he refuses, she throws him into a trap. Pacha takes the opportunity to snatch the potion, but with bad luck, it mixes with the other bottles. On top of that, palace guards arrive to arrest them, so Pacha throws several potions at them, turning them into animals. Then, he escapes with Cusco and takes the remaining bottles to find the right one. Cusco goes through various transformations, including a turtle, a bird, and a whale, until finally becoming a llama again. Fortunately, they have only two bottles left, so they know one of them is the correct antidote. However, just as Cusco is about to take it, Isma appears to snatch the bottles. They have a struggle, and the villain ends up transforming into a cute kitten. Despite this, she manages to continue with her plan and scratches Cusco's face, taking the potion. Hatcha tries to help him but falls off a cliff and manages to hang on. Isma, along with the vial, falls into the void, but the potion lands on one of the ledges of the structure they are on. Desperate, Cusco goes to retrieve the vial, but he realizes that Pacha can't hold on any longer. He faces a difficult decision, whether to recover the formula or rescue his friend from the ledge. For the first time in his life, the monarch sets aside his selfishness and saves Pacha. He watches as the vial falls into the abyss. Fortunately, there was a trampoline on the ground, causing Isma and the potion to bounce on the elastic surface and return to the structure. The wicked villain crashes into the ceiling, while the vial becomes loose again. Seeing this, Pacha and Cusco team up, just like when they climb the hills, and they scale the structure to recover the final antidote. Finally, Cusco drinks the potion and returns to his human form. Once recovered, he realizes that he had behaved like a jerk. He changes his attitude, becoming a fair and compassionate ruler. Later, we see that the young emperor abandoned his plan to build a mansion on Pacha's hill, and instead opted for a modest house next to his friends. This way, he could be with Pacha and his family. This shows us that Cusco's selfishness and arrogance as a king had led him to loneliness. Thanks to Pacha, Cusco finally understood that caring for others and building human relationships brought a new kind of happiness that was far more valuable than power and wealth. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more interesting movies.